What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster back here on this Saturday, January 28th, 2023. It's almost uh, noon here along the West Coast. Latest activity shows a 2.9 into the area of South America. Looks like around the northern Chile area. Let's go ahead and check out uh, what's going on out here across the flat scale model Earth. Did have some activity kicking up in the portions of Canada up here. Uh, USGS reporting that uh, earthquake around the Prince George area, uh, Canada, that kicked off yesterday as a 3.9. This originally came in as a uh, mid four pointer. Also, seen some activity up here around the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, also the plate boundary up here uh, along the uh, Pacific and the North American plate. Just off the coast here of Alaska. Seen a 2.9 coming in along the plate boundary. Don't get too much activity up here, uh, but occasionally we do. Now down south, a little bit of movement here around the, uh, this is about the Explorer plate here. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, roughly about the southern end of the Explorer plate. Very small microquake, or not microquake, but microplate here that makes up the whole Juan de Fuca plate. Uh, that's going to be this whole segment that's being shoved underneath the North American plate, uh, but got a little earthquake. Just shy of the Cascadia subduction zone itself, a 4.0 off the coast of Canada yeah, in that region there. All right, checking out California. Going to go over here to the 2.5 and map and above. There's not a whole lot above that. We did have a 3.7 kickoff here in Nevada, right around the uh, Candelaria Hills here. Now, this area has seen a, a six-pointer back in 2019, I believe it was. And occasionally we'll see aftershock activity stretching across this region across this highway highway three as well it's been relatively quiet there but uh, looks like things starting to kick back up with a 3.7 and some other smaller quakes there in the mix just outside of the tonopah region northern california specifically very quiet uh clear lake volcanic field that's going to be almost always active um on any given day we're always seeing swarms around that area ridgecrest area starting to fill in slightly here uh, just around the Coso Volcanic Field, quite a few ones, and even a 2.1 there from yesterday. A little bit of activity outside of Ridgecrest as well. And down into the extreme Southern California area, getting a cluster of swarming around the San Jacinto Fault Zone. That's going to be this area right here outside of Hemet. And uh, just shy of the San Andreas Fault, the plate boundary. Not seeing a whole lot of activity on that uh, plate boundary today. Uh, just mostly here to the west along these segments of the uh, San Jacinto Fault Zone. Further interior uh, into the northern uh, North American plate here up against the Rocky Mountains. Got a little bit of activity here near Corrine, Utah. 2.9 coming in just after midnight north of the uh, Salt Lake City area. Yellowstone not showing anything up here on the map, but uh, it's been somewhat active here over the past couple days far as small microquake activity goes. But uh, looking at the graph here today, um, doesn't look like a whole lot popping off. You have to kind of look close to see some of these earthquakes. Very, very small microquakes uh, there in Yellowstone currently. Oklahoma, one earthquake around Dibble, Oklahoma. Looks like uh, well, about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock last night. 3.5 coming in southwest of OKC area. We did see some movement, of course, around the New Madrid zone yesterday as well with that earthquake in Missouri. 1.7 although overnight uh, only one earthquake out here around the um, the Blue Ridge Mountains area looks like the Virginia North Carolina border area 1.8 at uh, 3.8 kilometers there for that earthquake now scooting over here towards the western Pacific we're starting to see some deeper earthquake activity here around the Kuril Kamchaka Trench Got a 4.7 coming in about 9 o'clock. And also yesterday, seen a 4.4. Now, this is an area I need to watch here for potential uh, mega quake activity. It's been awfully quiet. And this region does see an incredible amount of slip rate here on any given year. Uh, the plate dynamics here of this area shows us and confirms uh, a lot of westward plate movement here from the Pacific plate. Got the North American plate here coming down. Out of the north, squeezing this area, and then back behind that, the Eurasia Plate. This area should should have seen at least six or seven within the last um, 
few months and it hasn't uh, literally it's been uh well, i think over a year since we've seen any major activity on this even uh longer than that uh down here in the japan trench last year i think we've seen some sixes popping off here but this zone specifically is open up and uh, i think pretty ripe for a large earthquake uh, down here around the maluka sea still seen some activity uh where that seven pointer struck here oh a couple weeks ago now 5.3 just in the last hour kicking up within that earthquake zone where we've seen that seven pointer this has been a little hot spot of aftershock activity here recently uh, you can see that cluster of quakes here about 37 of them here just within the last week above 2.5 or uh, most of these are above 4.0 um, a couple upper fives as well again that's where that seven pointer struck here just a couple weeks ago aftershock activity could continue for a little while uh, up into the Philippines area, one earthquake here from yesterday. That was a 5.4. And the Mariana Trench, 5.0, coming in uh, late last night, it looks like, into the Guam area. Uh, back behind that, uh, still starting to, I don't know, I'm starting to wonder if we're going to fill in here really soon for earthquake activity. We've seen uh, quite a bit of westward pressure movement here, deeper earthquake activity around Fiji. A little cluster around New Zealand, but this area is wide open here. And the general plate movement area shows us that this zone should be picking up in some earthquake activity here very soon. Uh, it's been awfully quiet here over the past couple days. So we'll watch that area, Solomon Islands, uh, about Papua New Guinea area as well. Uh, there's some of those quakes around the Indonesia region there, around the Maluka Sea Notice activity here around the Java Trench has stopped completely. This is another zone that's been uh, lacking earthquake activity here recently. And uh, today it's continuing, but uh, we may just fill that in very soon. Got uh, some earthquake activity over here. Looks like a, uh, I think there's a little bit bigger one than a 4.6 in this area. I believe that was a five pointer uh, from, let's see when that was. Let's see if we can bring this up. 5.9 into the Turkey-Iran border. Uh, that one coming in looks like just, uh, let's see here, 18, a couple hours ago. By the way, this is Southern California here. A lot of times we'll see that come in. That kind of makes me think that, uh, you know, kind of crunching in a way, you know, like brittle rock or something breaking. That's a, a lot of earthquake activity ramping up here, but the USGS does not really show that movement. Uh, maybe picking up a little bit of it down here. That uh, station that I have pulled up, the Barrett Station, that's in Southern California. It's, it's positioned right around here, about northeast of San Diego within this zone right here. And uh, I think we're seeing a lot more earthquake activity uh, being reported in the, or uh, not being reported in this area. And definitely showing up on the seismograph stations here for this zone. Uh, like I say, it just kind of reminds me of a, you know, you can only crunch rock and mountains so much, right? Where you start to get that brittle breaking sensation, or not sensation, but uh, um, well, that's a way I picture it in my head. Just a extreme stress out here, creating all these little microquakes. And that's a lot of them, quite a bit. So we'll watch Southern California. We see that quite often, uh, but for whatever reason, the USGS does not appear to report all of these quakes that are showing up. Um, on the uh, on the graphs okay so did have some activity uh, i kind of got distorted there with that uh, movement but did have some activity with a 5.9 in turkey iran border area again just about an hour and a half ago uh, starting to see a pretty good uh, swarm of earthquake activity out there including quite a few microquakes uh, in that mix there with a 5.9 now let's start in the backfill a little bit here to the east uh, i still think we have a good probability of seeing some further movement here within the himalaya southward to about the northern end of the java trench this zone's been building up some steam for a little while that's uh, another hot spot to watch here potentially uh the atlantic ocean looks pretty calm uh, mediterranean region seen some activity yesterday and uh, overnight looks like this whole area uh, appears to be um, definitely picking up in earthquake activity uh, let's see indian ocean area looks pretty quiet uh, big island. Let's go ahead and check out Hawaii here real quick and see what we got. A little bit of activity lighting up here within the red circles. Not a whole lot though. Only 12 earthquakes and that's kind of a small 
number if you really think about any given day here we normally see around 20 to 30 so uh, about 12 of them the latest of uh, 2.0 in the pahala area no major changes to note there across the big island far as volcanic activity goes uh, up into the alaska region uh, looks about the same as we uh, have been over the past few weeks no major changes there's a pretty deep earthquake within the last hour 3.3 115 kilometers deep now this is a major subduction zone here between the pacific and the north american plate up here it's a uh, major uh definitely quite a bit of stress building up in that zone as noted here in this area along the aleutian trench the two arrows pointing together indicating those uh um, plate boundaries there subduction zone all right let's see what else we got here uh new zealand we did see some activity kicking up here on the globe Nothing showing up on the USGS map. There's a 4.3 and a 3.1 coming in. Looks like things are ramping up down there across portions of New Zealand. Let's go ahead and check out the GeoNet servers here and see what's being reported today for the folks down there. 4.3, three hours ago. Looks like uh, 25 kilometers east of Arthur's Pass, South Island area. Uh, that one about five kilometers deep relatively shallow uh, let's go to the all magnitudes map here and see what else we have a couple twos it looks like some mid twos and let's see here that looks like that's about it as far as any uh, elevated earthquake activity goes 4.3 showing up there and uh, i'm pretty certain that showed up across some seismograph stations here uh, as far as the earthquake drums go and that's probably centered right around uh we can pick any given spot here there it is nice little beautiful signature of that earthquake doesn't look like there's too much afterwards uh some very small microquake activity prior to that but uh, as you can see that four pointer will show up relatively nicely uh, across some stations north island new zealand looks pretty quiet not a whole lot going on there uh, according to some of these uh uh, vol not volcanic drums, but uh, earthquake drums there that monitor the activity. There's another overview where you can see the uh, four-pointer come across many different stations down there uh, in the area. All right, uh, let's see what else we have here across the area today. Well, you know, I, I think a def definitely a couple different spots we need to watch here for movement uh, in terms of uh, larger activity. Uh, we're getting, you know, we, we come to a halt here. We've noticed this halting of earthquake activity uh, over the last week or so. Bounce back and forth between the northern end of the Java Trench back over here to the southern end and right around the Banda Sea area. Now that tells me right there that there's still uh, quite a bit of uh, pressure built up in this region here locally. Uh, but not enough westward pressure movement or at least not enough uh, built up steam over here around the uh the rest of the java trench northward uh, but definitely can't uh can't ignore the fact that it's been awfully quiet here recently and uh quietness not necessarily a good thing in a major subduction zone level uh so we'll, we'll watch that and see how that plays out with uh, the continued bouncing back and forth there of the activity and again in between two zones like that you got the Banda Sea, Maluka Sea activity, and uh, deeper movement, some surface activity here around the Kermadec Trench southward. Uh, that all puts further pressure and steam over here in between these two points. Uh, I'm talking about this activity here and, and this one. X marks the spot potentially here for some activity real soon. Let's see what else we have here. I think that's about it. Uh, South America, aside from these twos and a couple threes, is relatively quiet today. Not seeing any major uptick. Uh, trimmer activity last night was, uh, again, situated down there in Northern California. 186 epicenters of trimmer uh, for the folks there in Northern Cal. Very minimal earthquake activity happening up here currently, but whenever we see the trimmer down dip, that's a good indicator. There is some regional stress along the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. It takes stress and it takes pressure to create those trimmers. Uh, and that's what's shoving down this plate here underneath the North American plate, creating those trimmers, adding strain up to the Cascadia subduction zone. 
right now nothing popping off at least as far as uh, it being reported i know the usgs is a little sketchy when it comes to reporting anything below 2.5 on the weekends all right space weather activity uh no not a whole lot going on here um these guys still have some elevated threats here i believe we can disregard uh these numbers it doesn't look like they've got to them i don't really see a high threat of any x flare or even an m flare probability uh, looking at the current solar x-ray flux chart uh, shows us low grade c flares popping off nothing big at all and the look here at the magnetic structure of the sunspots um, pretty much confirms that uh, we're not going to see anything there's not a whole lot of development out here um, this one here this little guy is starting to grow a little bit looks like it may try to um, look scary but it's just a little bitty sunspot not going to do anything i don't think and all these other regional sunspots here look very disorganized and do not pose any threat not even for an m flare it looks like on those uh regions and the visible disc here looking a lot less than what it did here last week the other side of the uh, sun here was very active with large sunspots but they all behaved quite nicely did not give us any major flares whatsoever a look at the aurora forecast fairly minimal not a good chance at all to see any auroras at the higher latitudes we don't have any major expected solar storms coming up things look very calm for being you know towards our well here in a couple years we'll be heading towards the solar maximum around the uh, summer of 2025 better hope you know maybe um here in the week or so we might see some further development come around but uh, for now entering into a very quiet zone of solar weather activity national data buoy center not really seeing anything in event mode no unusual activity no uplifting of the oceanic floor <laughs> things look relatively calm and quiet out here for now and uh, i think that's about it folks have yourself a great saturday um sunny out here uh, Northern California it is about 60 degrees. Uh, we got some rain coming in, some colder temperatures coming in here over the next couple days. But uh, uh, right now, it doesn't look like these storms are going to be as powerful as the ones we had earlier this month. But hey, we'll take any more rain and snow uh, that is headed our way. I'm not going to complain about it whatsoever. All righty have a good day folks again keep an eye on that uh that station up here barrett that's definitely a lot of earthquake activity uh and that's definitely what it is it's not wind this is uh we as i mentioned here earlier in this video we uh see that often when things are picking up there in southern cal and then it will just uh you know kind of drop off and fade away but those are those are definitely a lot of earthquakes there around the um san jacinto fault zone southern california definitely shown quite a bit there so alrighty, folks have yourself a good day we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight i got some more schoolwork to do yes schoolwork to do on the weekend how fun take care guys we'll catch you later